Okay, so we're all done boring this thing out. You can see all the lube grooves up in there. Um, the last thing I do after I went ahead and, and bored that was I, I put a different bit in the lathe and faced off the back side of that because if we want the we want these bases absolutely perpendicular to the center line of the bullet. Um, so I take a facing cut there, which should be dead perpendicular to the to the bullet. Um, and I only took about three thousandths. I just with the lathe up, with the lathe off. Wind this up here. Um, I just come up and touch the tool and then took note of where it was at on the X axis and went three thousandths more and then took a facing cut. Um, one thing. <clears throat> Also, when I'm boring these bullets, um, bullet molds, I should say, one thing I do is I write my measurements. This was my last cut right here from 700 to 620. Cut before that was 560 to 480. Um, and just take a little, uh, a rag, a little carb cleaner on it. A little wet spot there. And that's just a nice magic eraser. Erases it off so the lathe stays clean. Um, just write it on a Sharpie marker. So, and then also we were 415 on our main um, bore up through there, the smallest portion of the lathe. Once I was done, and I don't think I showed my um, boring tool. So this right here, where's that? Right there, is what I use to bore the grooves with. Um, Once I finished everything, I went to 416 with that and went up through and just took just a little bit off of the bottom of the groove or the, anyway, the smallest portion of that there. And that would get rid of any burr, which this is cast, so there shouldn't really be a burr. We can just put a little wire brush on a Dremel and clean that up good, so. Um, we're going to take it out of the... Another bad thing of uh, filming with an iPhone. Freaking United States was calling, as the Pink Floyd song says. It tells me I've been... Uh, uh, congratulations, I've been selected for a free room or something. So I'm going to put a one on this jaw, a two on that jaw, one there, a two there just in case for whatever reason this bullet isn't good we need to bore it out to a 50 caliber and that's one thing I do if I'm if I'm cutting a 45 caliber mold and I don't like the way it turns out I'll go ahead and bore it to a deeper bigger mold I did that with a 50 cal that I made the other day um, it's been a few months ago it came out I didn't like how it looked um, and so I went ahead and bored it out to a 58 caliber for my son's um, musket and made a Minet ball out of it. So we're gonna loosen number one first, right here, just crack it and just crack this. And I have not pulled this out of the lathe yet. This will be the first time we're gonna look at it together. Go a little bit looser. And the reason I mark those jaws and mark the mold is it makes it 
you just have two jaws to tighten back in and by the amount of tension you put on it, you should be able to get it back to zero pretty easy. So here we go. I like it. I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. Let's pull the camera up and take a better look at it here. You can see the, the top um, lube groove is a little thicker than the rest of them. Um, quite a bit thicker actually. I cut that tool that I bored the grooves with on a 20 degree angle. Um, I would have liked all the grooves to look more like that top one, but they didn't. But the bottom of that's pretty even, and I think it should shoot okay. fairly clean in there um, so yeah we'll we'll put this thing together drill the holes for the handle and the sprue plate all that fun stuff and on the mill and see how it comes out so yeah we'll try casting some slugs out of it to tomorrow maybe we can get it on there and get everything we got a bore or not bore we've got a mill slots in here for the handles drill for the the screws that hold the handles in place um, drill for the sprue plate drill a stop pin for the sprue plate um, build the sprue plate so there's still quite a bit of work to do on this mold um, yeah, I'm, I'm all right with how that turned out. Say I wish that top loop band wasn't so much wider than the rest of them. But I think it'll shoot okay. It's a nice long bullet, 1.2 inches for a 1 in 20 twist out of my white muzzle loader. Um, so it's nice and long. So we ought to get some decent grouping out of it. Um, anyway, and I could have nailed that, <clears throat> that top lube groove also had I turned my tool that I went in and bored the nose with. Um, <clears throat> where did it go? And I turned that down and then I hand ground that cut and you can see that's way less than a 20 degree angle or 70 degree angle I guess it would be um, because I used the grinder don't know where my other nose profile piece went I've got another profile that I actually turned on the lathe and and cut the angle in um, with the lathe and so that one comes out pretty good but it's a much uh, more uh, not quite as tight a radius as that it comes to more of a point had I used that tool that bullet would have been up into here in length on the nose um, so anyway, there we go. Next video, next step will be drilling and tapping all the holes in it. And I don't do, you know, it'd be easiest to do all of that while it's set up in the mill after you've, you know, cut your, cut everything square off the, off the front end with the blocks. It would be the easiest 
you know, to do all that while you're in the mill, but that's a lot of work. If you're not happy with the bullet design, then you just wasted a bunch of time. So anyway, one more look at the bullet design. I think it'll shoot. Um, I wish that top loop groove wasn't quite so deep, but it is. We're going to cast them and see how they see how they shoot. If they shoot, we'll stay with it. If they don't, we'll chuck it up and bore it out to a 50 caliber.